while cutting some internal threads I noticed that the lathe's carriage was lifting off the bed. It's time to check the carriage gibbs. I check with a feeler gauge at different points along the bed. The top and bottom of the bed need to be parallel before I proceed. I need to remove the lead screw and apron to access the front carriage gib. First I remove the rear bearing block. This is the replacement block I built to replace the original plastic one. The two screws holding the carriage lock I made also hold the apron to the carriage. The ball handle acts on a lever that pushes on the underside of the lathe's bed. The other two screws holding the apron are removed. A screw is partially threaded on either side. A hammer is used to tap on these screws to unseat the apron from two dowel pins located on the underside of the carriage. The apron has detached from the carriage and is held by those two screws. They are removed and the apron is out of the way. This is the carriage gib, it is made of cast iron. That cut forms a flexure that served as a carriage lock. The gib is held to the carriage by means of four cap screws and a screw on the top of the carriage that acted on the flexure. This area on the gib is supposed to be in very close proximity to the underside of the lathe bed. The surface is horrible. I shall use the part that should bear on the lathe bed as a reference and grind the bottom parallel to it. That's definitely a much better finish. Now I can use this surface as a reference. I verify on the surface plate that the two surfaces are parallel. The top part can now be ground parallel and lowered so that the gib can reach the bed. The top of the gib is ground. This part barely fits within the limits of the surface grinder I built. The gib was installed. I had to shim the gib so that the carriage could slide freely. There is very little lift. Whilst I was at it, I decided to check the other gib. The DTI moved 0.02 mm when I lifted the carriage and 0.05 mm when I pulled down on it. So a total of 0.07 millimeters. When I removed this gib the carriage lifted off the bed pivoting on the V on the opposite side of the bed. There was wear on the gib where it contacts the underside of the bed. This shows that during operation, the carriage contacts the bed at the V and the underside of the bed. I ground this gib in the same way as the other one, removing 0.06 millimeters in total. The play went down to less than 0.02 millimeters. And the carriage moves smoothly. When I apply oil to the ball oilers it makes its way to the gibs as well. To reattach the apron, it is located by means of the two dowel pins and a screw on either side is used to seat it.
The carriage handwheel must be rotated to ensure correct engagement of its rack and pinion mechanism. The carriage lock is installed. And checked for operation. The original carriage lock actuating screw is replaced but not tightened. The lead screw is passed through the half nut assembly and pinned in the coupling. And finally the lead screw bearing block is assembled. Just in case, I decided to check the lathe's alignment. A skin cut was taken at either end of this 20 cm long 30 mm diameter steel rod. There was no effect on the lathe's accuracy.